So a while back I was watching Maker's Muse and he had a, a, a test print that he used. It was a torture test for a 3D printer. Today I'm going to give that a shot and I'm also going to give that uh, that fossil fish that they have on Thingiverse. I'll put the links in the description to both prints. And uh, I'm going to give those a shot on this printer and just see how it stands up to it. I'll see you at the end of the video. I did not expect this. So let me first before I pop anything off, I just want to take a look at this. Now I did use support material uh, just touching the bed. I didn't have it where it would uh, where it would do any support material up top. So right now the support material is just in the in the base, uh, the base of it, the bridge looked like looks like it really turned out nice. But look at this tip. I did not expect that at all. Anyway, I did two two different prints. I have. Uh, the Maker's Muse, uh, this was developed by Angus, a Maker's Muse, and he's awesome when it comes to making this. I, just the, I watched his video when he made this model, and it's just amazing what he did with it. And uh, this right here, I'll, I'll put the links for both of these in the video description. And this was the floppy fish. I watched uh, Chuck from his channel. He, uh, he printed one of those out last week, and I wanted to just see if this printer would be able to print one where it flux around. So let's take a look. Let's go ahead and pop everything off here. That removed good. 
back off the zoom a little bit. Okay. Now it does have support material underneath the letters. It's coming off all right. And I guess if I messed up by using support material on this, I, I apologize. I just wanted to... I didn't want to have it where it had support material up here. I just wanted to see what it would do just touching the bed. I didn't even think about it doing support material under the letters. Support material under the back of it. Now, right here you can see where there's some stringing. It's not horrible. Let's take a look at the front here. That wasn't even touching. On the bottom of it you can't see the smallest hole. But you can definitely see the other two holes. On the top you can see a very tiny hole there. Another hole's turned out good. That post there, I couldn't believe that actually printed. It's amazing. And these three printed good. The bridge turned out great. And let's see how the support material pulls out on the inside. Let me grab a little screwdriver if I can find it. There we go. And once again this was uh, done in Cura. I started using Cura a few weeks ago and I like it a lot better. It gives you a lot more control than than uh, Slicer does. That turned out pretty good. There's one piece in there. There it popped out. And clean up the rest of that pretty good. This is where the letters are printed out on the side. And you can see where it's. Looks like the E didn't print completely right. Because that's all imp it's uh, embedded. I wish I could get a better. Let me sit down here and just use the zoom. There we go. Looks like the. The E's messed up a little bit. But all in all, that turned out terrific. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and set that to the side for the moment. And now let's see what happens with this fish. Take him. The bottom layer, I have it set. Where it prints it, uh, I'm going to turn my printer off. There we go. Um, it prints the bottom layer at a uh, 125%, so it's got a little bit of flash. It just needs to be broke loose a little bit. There we go. There we go. One more. Okay, turned out pretty good. It's just an amazing print because the way it prints, the joints are are printed so there's no assembly as you'll see as you can see from the time lapse 
there's no assembly whatsoever. It's 100% printed. And I honestly didn't know if this printer would do it. But I gotta tell you, this this G it's a uh, G Tech uh, aluminum Prusa i i3. I just love this little printer. <laughs> Three hundred and thirty bucks what I spent on it, free shipping, and I, I could not have I couldn't have even dreamed of getting a better printer than this. Uh, the only issues I've ever had with it is the the Z wobble, and as you can see from from these prints, that's been pretty much eliminated. So it's I'm happy. I definitely would recommend this printer to anybody. I just can't get over the detail of it. And this was, mind you, this was at uh, point 0.2 layer height. So I've tried point 0.1 or yeah, point 0.1. I haven't done it since I changed out the the brackets on it. I might give that a shot and just see if I can get a little bit better detail on everything. But this is the guy I printed this one last night, pulled it off the printer this morning. And then these two I set up both of these I set up before I went to work this afternoon. I think it's about two o'clock. I put them on the printer and I believe it said it was six hours and twenty minutes it took to print the two of them. So there we go. I gotta say, I, I it surprised me. <laughs> I did not expect it to print out that well. Well, thank you very much for watching. If you like it. Thought I was done, didn't you? Honestly, so did I until this morning when I woke up, and I'm thinking to myself, how in the world did that? print come out as well as it did and then it hit me. I didn't change the settings in Cura to the thing specified in the video. <laughs> now it might just been a month or two since I watched the video entirely and so this morning I rewatched the video of, of Angus's on the Maker's Muse and realized what I had done. So without any further ado let's go ahead and print the actual print with the settings specified. Uh, right now you're going to be seeing the settings on, sc on the screen that I did have. And now I'm going to put up the ones that are currently programmed into it, which I believe are the ones specified by in his video. So let's get to it. I'll see you at the end of the video. Okay, so let's compare them. This is the one we printed last night. As you can see, the every, all the details there. The E is a little bit messed up. Letters turned out good. These pins here looked really good. The overhang is a little bit of a dip, but not bad. It did the tip all the way to the top. A little bit of melting there, but not bad. There was the stringing back here on the on this part. The support material came out good. You can't see the hole down here. The other holes are there. Lines are, turned out good on the side. But on the top, you can see the little tiny hole. And it's all there. Now, this, that was all done in the settings that uh, that I have been using here lately. So it's like a 30 millimeter per second uh, travel speed for printing and, and all that. This was with the settings that were supplied with on the on the video. And as you can see, is a huge difference. The this part up here is almost non-existent. It's just barely there. 
these really turned out rough. They're just barely hanging on. Holes are still there. Overhang still looks pretty good. There's a little bit of a dip there. Tip of it still turned out alright, even though it was going at 60 millimeters per second. It's really rough. It's got a weird design. <laughs> I don't know how it did that, but it's got a weird design all the way around it. The letters turned out. looks like the E. Actually, it looks like the bottom of all the letters. It didn't create any support material at all. Uh, looks like the E's really fairly messed up. S looks like it. Oh, there went that one. Touched it. <laughs> looks like it kind of stringed out a little bit. The E actually looks better on this one. That's the funny part. Uh, it looks like it's stringed out. Messed up back there. It only printed two instead of three of those parts. And this is the raft that is included with that. So let's see if that will pull off. I've never printed with a raft before so this is the first. And that was done with two layers for the perimeters and then three, uh, yeah, that's not coming off from the bottom very easy. And let me pull over here to the side for a moment see if I can, nope. <laughs> There's supposed to be support material above that up inside. But it doesn't look like I'm going to get to it very easily. So I'm going to declare this one a fail. <laughs> uh, anyway, somewhere underneath it is that area where the support material is. Oh well. Anyway, it's pretty messed up looking. Which is more what I was expecting. But uh, had to really wrap it up. Once again, with this one here, my normal print speed that I do with Cura with this machine is at 30 millimeters per second for for the majority of the printing, and it actually dip, dips down to 15 millimeters per second when it does the the outer layers of it. And then this one, I switched all the settings to 60 millimeters per second. All the way through for everything. So perimeters, everything is all 60, 60 millimeters per second, which is double the normal speed that I have set for this one. Um, the normal movements of the printer, like if it's moving to completely across the bed, I have that set at 60. So the travel speed is really ramped up on this one. It's more like what I did with that very first print when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Oh goodness. Anyway, I wanted to make sure I did it the right way, so I did it the right way. So Angus, thank you very much for a great model, and thank you for giving me the, the permission to do it. I don't like doing stuff like this without getting the blessing from the person who created it. Uh, when it's on Thingiverse, that's one thing, but whenever it's some, from somebody's channel, I like to get the permission first before I do it. So thank you very much, Angus. I appreciate it. And I want to thank you all for watching. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this channel, please subscribe. I sure appreciate it. Have a great night. Thank you very much. Bye.